The narrative kicks off with Catherine, a beautiful psychiatrist, encountering a young boy named Edward in the desert. Edward, who suffers from schizophrenia and has been comatose for an extended period, is the focus of Catherine's efforts to delve into his subconscious and revive him. In order to bring Edward back to life, Catherine must persuade him to board a boat, but the specter of the boogeyman impedes his cooperation. Faced with this obstacle, Catherine decides to sever the connection by activating the sensory microchip embedded in her arm. Upon re-emerging from the subconscious realm, Catherine finds herself back in the laboratory, where her colleagues rouse her from a semi-conscious state. Edward's parents make an appearance to check on their son, with the father expressing skepticism towards the efficacy of Catherine's unconventional treatment methods due to the lack of tangible improvement in Edward's condition. He dismisses Catherine's interactions with Edward as mere figments of her imagination. Undeterred by the father's doubts, Catherine remains resolute in her determination to aid Edward and continue their therapy sessions. At the same time, a man named Carl Stagger, who is a serial killer, goes to a deserted factory with his albino dog, Valentine. Carl suffers from severe schizophrenia. He goes into a room meant for torture and looks at the body of a girl that he had drowned in a locked cage. After reveling in the final movements of the body, Carl empties the water from the cage. Catherine's supervisor engages in discussions with Edward's parents to prolong the treatment treatment sessions for an additional six months. However, a different method is required. Catherine proposes allowing Edward access to her subconscious to rescue him from a harmful environment, but her co-worker warns that it may not be safe for both Edward and Catherine. As a result, she is instructed to go home and get proper rest. Catherine attempts to unwind at home, but her thoughts keep drifting back to Edward. In her dream, she encounters the boogeyman and the boy's subconscious. Meanwhile, Carl transports the corpse to his basement and proceeds to bleach it thoroughly before placing it on a table for washing. He then plays the camera footage depicting the victim's agony. A week after the incident, authorities discovered the girl's body beneath a bridge. It becomes apparent to them that Carl is responsible for the crime. The collar around the victim's neck also suggests his involvement. Carl demonstrates possession of all the bodies of his victims and is now targeting a new victim, Julia Hickson. He sees the girl as a doll and is overwhelmed with the urge to claim her as his own. In order to control his excitement, the maniac takes medication. The authorities are still looking for Carl. Data on the dog's hair discovered on the body was received from the lab. Finding out that the coat comes from an albino dog provides a valuable clue because these animals are extremely uncommon. Julia Hickson headed to the parking lot later that evening to reach her car. She approached with extreme caution, having a stun gun ready for defense. After safely getting into her car and backing up, she suddenly heard a dog whimper. Julia decided to help the animal and got out of the car, only to realize it was a trick by Carl. In the meantime, the FBI is occupied with agent Peter Novak, believing that the maniac deliberately wants to be captured as he leaves behind two clear clues. The agents reach out to Julia's family members, but despite their best efforts, Peter is unable to comfort them. Based on the information at hand, the FBI is able to locate Carl's whereabouts. The dog's fur, Valentine, becomes a crucial element in the ongoing investigation. Novak and his team quickly move to capture the suspect. Carl was taking a relaxing bath at home when suddenly he had a seizure, and heard his inner voice telling him to take his medication. Unable to take the pills, Carl began to search for a cure, wandering around his house and becoming more agitated. Agents arrived at the scene with a well-prepared capture team, breaking into the maniac's house to find Carl unconscious. While Julia was not in the house, agents discovered disturbing items in the basement, including dolls with mutilated bodies, chains, a mysterious logo carver, and a video of Carl's previous victim being tormented in a water cell. Despite the maniac's attempt to trap Julia in a cage and fill the cell with water for over 40 hours in the hospital, it was revealed that the maniac suffered from a rare form of schizophrenia known as Wallen's disease, and he fell into a coma during a crisis on the day of his arrest. Despite Carl being the only one who knew where Julia was imprisoned, a doctor suggested using a technique to enter his subconscious to find her. Carl was taken to a center where Agent Novak explained the plan to Catherine and her colleagues, emphasizing the need to enter Carl's subconscious to locate the victim. Catherine was chosen to face Carl's inner world in order to save Julia, as she agreed to help based on her desire to assist the maniac's victims. Catherine's supervisor provides a detailed explanation to the team of agents about the fundamental mechanics 
of a system designed to infiltrate the neural impulses of a patient. This innovative system not only transmits data from the subconscious mind, but also empowers the psychiatrist to delve deep into the patient's innermost thoughts and emotions, thereby becoming an active participant in their mental processes. Catherine finds herself immersed in the subconscious mind of Carl. In this surreal realm, she witnesses an unusual scene of baptism taking place by a river. As she navigates through the labyrinthine compartments of Carl's brain, she is taken aback by the sight of blood scattered everywhere. She encounters a young Carl in a brightly lit room, standing next to a horse. Catherine attempts to establish a friendly connection with the young boy, but Carl is visibly frightened. Unexpectedly, he pushes her away from the horse, which is then brutally sliced by enormous knives. Undeterred by fear, Catherine follows the boy and stumbles upon a room where Carl has confined his disfigured victims in cages. Ultimately, she comes face to face with Carl's dark alter ego, a twisted king seated on a throne. Overwhelmed by the pure evil she encounters, Catherine retreats to the safety of the real world, too terrified to venture back into Carl's subconscious. Catherine's supervisor warns Novak about the potential risks of the experiment. If Catherine succumbs to the horrifying reality of the maniac's world, she could fall into a coma or even lose her life. Meanwhile, water begins to fill Julia's cage, indicating the urgency of locating her. Catherine informs Novak about the challenges of dealing with Carl, as the Dark King in his mind is far more powerful than the defenseless boy. However, the only way to discover Julia's whereabouts is to reach the boy, Carl. Novak firmly believes that even a child who has suffered the most horrific abuse can still grow into a person who would never inflict harm on another living being. After some contemplation, Catherine agrees to continue her session with the maniac. She requests that Valentine be brought to the lab to help soothe Carl. Once again, Catherine finds herself in Carl's subconscious. She summons Valentine, which significantly reduces the aggression in the maniac's world. She manages to connect with the boy Carl and hands him a small mirror, which he can use to emit rays of sunlight if he wishes to summon Catherine. During this interaction, she accidentally breaks a plate, which triggers Carl's father to a and brutally punish his son for playing with dolls. He beats Carl with an iron rod, and Catherine, helpless, can only watch from a closet. The maniac subconscious reveals to Catherine his first victim, it appears that Carl's dark side first emerged during his baptism when he was submerged in water for an extended period. The child felt as though he was drowning, but no one attempted to rescue him. As a result, the adult Carl began to drown his victims. Suddenly, the demonic side of the maniac materializes and convinces Catherine of the reality of his world by placing a collar around her neck. Trapped and unable to return without assistance, Catherine is left at the mercy of the maniac's world. Meanwhile, Julia's Cage continues to fill with water. Despite her hysteria, the FBI remains clueless about her location. Agent Novak decides to rescue Catherine from the maniac's subconscious by entering Carl's mind himself. Guided by a ray of sunlight, Peter locates Catherine. The cruel king has awakened a dark essence within Catherine. She refuses to heed Peter's pleas to return to reality. The perverted Carl appears and begins to torment Peter, subjecting him to medieval torture. Catherine watches the scene with a malicious smile making no effort to save Peter. However, Peter manages to rouse Catherine by reminding her of her brother, who was in a coma for six months before he passed away. The revived Catherine stabs the maniac with a knife, causing him to vanish with a terrifying scream. Peter and Catherine finally encounter the boy, Carl, who refuses to reveal Julia's location. However, Novak spots strange symbols that he had previously seen in the maniac's basement in the real world. Peter convinces Catherine to urgently return to the real world, but she resists, promising Carl that she will return to him. Back in reality, Novak rushes to gather all available information about the Carver Company and immediately sets off to find Julia. Meanwhile, Catherine locks herself in the lab and initiates the process of allowing Carl to enter her mind, determined to complete her mission. The inner world of Catherine is a stark contrast to the maniac's imagination. Carl feels more comfortable and liberated here, leading him to open up about his childhood and his father's brutality. 
He hints to Catherine that he must be drowned to kill the Dark King. Carl's evil essence invades Catherine's mind, leading to a fierce battle. Catherine inflicts numerous wounds on the fiend and drives a sword into his heart. As he chokes on his own blood, the maniac grins sadistically and declares, I'm a god, boy, implying that his two essences are inseparable. The injuries inflicted on the maniac are mirrored in the boy. The blood-soaked child pleads with Catherine to save him, which can only mean one thing, the boy must be drowned. The Carver logo indeed leads to the discovery of an abandoned factory where the maniac tortured his victims. Upon arrival, Peter miraculously uncovers a hidden basement and rushes to Julia. She's fighting for her life as the cage is completely filled with water and she can only breathe through a tube. Peter fires several shots at the glass, but it's not enough. He resorts to smashing the glass with a metal object, freeing Julia just in time. Unable to calm down, Julia is comforted by Peter, who holds her in his arms. Catherine gently submerges the boy in water. In his mind, the boy is transported back to the moment of his baptism in the river. The boy slowly succumbs to death, making no effort to fight for his life. Simultaneously, both the cruel Dark King and Carl in the real world meet their end. A few weeks later, Novak and his team conduct a further search of the maniac's house. Peter learns that Catherine has adopted Carl's dog. Catherine visits to bid farewell to her friend and reveals that she has decided to conduct a reverse movement session with Edward as well. She is prepared to allow the boy to end his mind in Catherine's world. The movie comes to a close as we see Catherine one last time in the dream world. She heads out and places the boat on a tree, and the boy watches her carefully. The ghost of the boogeyman does not hinder Edward's boat from sailing, indicating that the boy finds finally has the chance to recover and heal. 